okay recording is a starter so anyone wants to talk about the databases or about the relational database and where what is mysql mysql you can also call it as mysql or mysql okay i will also open the ppt Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Today class, we will start with the introduction and we will install MySQL in our setup. Okay, this is how it will be there. So, This comes comes under my 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 sequel comes under module one. This is not module two. This comes under the module one along with the Linux way Linux and data warehousing part. Uh, my sequel and Cassandra will be together, but Cassandra we will look when it is when we are seeing Hadoop. Okay, because uh, it is also distributed. So if you know about uh, distributed architecture, then it will be easy to understand Cassandra also. Okay, MySQL, uh, it's a relational databases. So this is how our class will go. Okay, about MySQL, about the relational database terminologies, about uh, so what is a structure query language, and we will also, uh, there are storage engines that we'll talk about, the architecture, and the installation of that and the basic <coughs> database operations okay so mysql is a structured query language it is a query language which is to used to uh, uh, query your data which is a present in your databases okay so furthermore it is a open source a relational database itself they'll say so initially that was there were only uh, sql structured query language and this, uh, i mean for, uh, when the need increases and there were many developers they started developing many sql languages and mysql is now popularly used it is a relational databases there are different kind of a databases we will see it okay what is the what are the different kinds and how this one is different okay it is a cross platform um, which means it runs on a number of uh, different platforms what they say is you can run mysql in your uh, linux operating system in your windows operating system or in your mac os or in your embedded system anywhere okay different versions of mysql are available okay and there are also user interfaces like mysql workbench or uh, another workbenches where you can interact with your databases Oh, just a moment. okay sorry about that okay well furthermore don't worry we will see it uh, how it is used so yeah, actually that uh, uh, data which are stored there is a mysql engine uh, using is uh, using that we can store our data in the form of a database what is a database a database is uh, nothing but the uh, values are stored in the rows and column format okay that is where you store the database we call it as a database 
okay what is mysql they say it is a relational database management system relational means uh, see uh, data are stored see we saw we keep saying like in our java we say that we add employee data we add student data so the employee will have some information no? like his name address id uh, mobile number and street all those things those things we can store it in a table in a table format and uh, like student information also can be stored into a table format they are relational in the sense one or two tables can be related together so table format when i say table we understand right we saw my uh, csv files that is excel sheets we are seeing it those are store, storing all the informations in rows and column okay so when i say like when i wanted to store some information about i'm an employee and all so in the database you can store in rows this is a row one or row two row and column format okay this is what we call it as a database database is a uh, is a space where you can store a collection of data okay and here we say relational database so that i will explain it later first i'll tell in uh, what is table row and column so this is the table so when i say about an employee details in java we are saying like we uh, we store it as in the form of objects right so in a table in a database how we are storing like employee name id uh, his phone number okay street email id all this things email id all these things can be stored in the database like this form okay employee name this can be his id this can be his phone number in each column and the street those who know about the database they can easily relate many can easily relate it okay but just for an interactive i am starting this with this and the row say for example employee one information i'm storing it here like uh, peter id 100 some phone number uh, and uh, some street name uh, main street something and his email id likewise employee two information i'm storing it in the second like uh, john 100 likewise so this we call it as a table okay and the whole thing okay which we this is a single table the whole thing which we say it as a database so relational database means so for example this is the employee table and there is another table maybe like a department okay relation in the sense if you are trying to relate between this table employee table and the relate uh, department table then it is called the relational relation that we are creating it there are ways that we can create relation between tables okay uh, so it is possible that we can relate between it, uh, two tables in your database or multiple tables so that is the reason they call this as a relational database management system okay data dbms that is the abbreviation for this relational database management system and the language it's supposed to uh, query the data is the structure structured query language okay it means how to retrieve the data of a particular employee or find a particular id of an employee all this information how we uh, uh, access the information inside the table using the structured query language okay and it is a free to download mysql is open source and open source and it is a free to download okay source code is also available uh, it is maintained by the oracle by, by oracle corporation okay it is written in c and c yeah Uh, not like that uh, see uh, when you are creating rows and columns mostly it will be like a related information you will put it in a one table like employee table will have inf information about employees uh, department will uh, table will have information about department and the student table will have information about student so what i say relation is a particular employee may belong to a particular department so that is the relation uh, uh, here the table in employee table can 
a particular employee can belong to a particular department that information i will store in the department table also like this employee belongs to this uh, employee one some field i can have there i can say like employee one is presser is belonging to department one so this way we can relate it uh, that we will see it using keys we can relate it likewise we will see it in later on structure query language means uh, uh, see uh, i will one example for the query language uh, is like a select a table name okay select uh, this is the query which you write it in select star from some table you will say so this is the statement that this uh, this is the table name say for example employee so this is the structure query language which is used to uh, query query means uh, collect some information from your table or from your database so that is what the structured query language is okay so how do we retrieve data from a table or how do we update or how do we add a data into a table or into a database that is the uh, structure and a database is nothing but a collection of these tables okay together we can say it as a database we normally group See, same like uh, in any other languages like we can group the similar kind of a tables into a one database okay and you can create relations between them or not that we will see it later on okay my sql internally is written in c or c plus plus it is c plus plus language okay internally means the coding like how it how you can store the data into a table how retrieve it how it is view how it is viewed okay to the user all these things are written in a c c++ language okay it is actually developed by michael vidinas under uh, david axmark in 1994 they started developing it in 1994 itself and this is may not be important information and there is one interesting information that how it got a name my sql the meaning of my in sql anyone can say that what is the meaning of my in sql what is my in sql called are you all following oh, why you not speaking anything it is nothing okay it is just some information that when this person no michael wydenius uh, yeah wydenius when he was uh, developing this yes we are developing this my sql uh, he gave the name of his daughter this is his daughter name okay that's what he just it's a sql language okay all relational databases you follow sir sql language in the sense structured query let's see java is a language right and python is a language language when i say that the language which the computer understands likewise this database management system understand this language okay the rows and column values which are stored in the database is uh, nothing but a, uh, is uh, understands the language which is written in my sql uh, sorry sql okay structured query language to uh, retrieve or store any data in the database you understand now what is a database it is a nothing but a collection of information you are storing how you are storing in a structured way in a structured way it is nothing but rows and uh, columns rows and columns how do you again structure in the form of tables so we can say uh, plainly like a database is nothing but a collection of tables okay yeah likewise we can say and it is now it is maintained by the oracle uh, corporation okay they do uh, development also maintenance of this mysql mysql okay and query means query means uh, see it is a query you, a question only okay uh, you ask me a question no like uh, what is a query likewise it is like uh, we are querying the database we are questioning the database we are saying select see if you see this statement i am this is one of the query okay uh, query statement also we can say i am saying select star means all information okay all information from table name i am saying that is what the query is okay we pass the query if we it is like we are uh, 
questioning the table to give retrieve some information okay plain plain english text okay that's what that query means and and we are questioning the structured uh, format that is the rows and table format so it is a structured query language okay i will move on further so database management system okay it is like an application itself okay that stores the collection of data uh, but mysql we say it has my uh, mysql we say rdbms relational database management system dbms rdbms why because the uh, tables will be related in that but plainly from where that uh, relational database management system com term comes from is from the dbms okay database management system it's an application like uh, whatever the application we see like a java applications or uh, some application you see you know you are using it no likewise it's an application what it will do it will have this stores the to store a data like a storage space stores the data a collection of data together a database is an organized collection of structured information or data this i have told and it is controlled by the dbms this dbms means the system because it will be like it will not be like a plain application right it should also be controlled by some user and all so all those information will be present we, we, we can collectively call it as a database management system okay data plus database management system is the data system database systems this is fine and each database can have one or more distinct apis for creating and uh, accessing managing searching and duplicating what they are saying is say data in databases there are different types of databases will be available like uh, this one by sql we are seeing it as a relational database there is also like this uh, distributed databases or object oriented databases distributed databases we say like hadoop it's a distributed data 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 uh, distributed database system likewise we can say distributed means data will be distributed among different nodes okay and uh, data warehouses in lately in late times we are coming across the data warehouses okay which we are storing storing storage of huge number of data there is also like no sql databases as they say see sql is structured okay uh, rows and columns will be there no sql means it will not be structured at all okay there like a data will not be like here we can segregate right employee name we can segregate from a data id we can segregate whereas in no sql you cannot segregate the data as such the data will be stored and there are also open source databases something like multi mode document type cloud databases so okay uh, for each of this accessing say if you are accessing distributed type or if you are accessing the relational type they have the separate application programming interfaces that are those libraries or the functionalities they have to do uh, the querying or creating an, an creating uh, creating a table or storing the information the way of creating a, uh, databases everything changes as i said for a different databases it will change okay uh, that is what it, that uh, each databases will have their own distinct apis so that will be developed by the uh, respective developers like mysql developers or sql oracle sql developers and others are like distributed okay when i say relational databases do anyone wants to give any other example of uh, relational rdbm relational dbms i said mysql is one of the example anything else SQL, Oracle, SQL. Anything else you can think? Hadoop is a distributed uh, database. It is not a database. A distributed system will say. Okay, it is not a, a database. Database you can say, but they don't call it likewise. Okay. Okay. What are some other example? My SQL Server. A server and a client all together is one database only arun okay so when i say mysql it includes a server and client i'll tell you about server and client later on i'm saying like sql oracle sql is there 
something else like post gear is there post gre sql this is also query language ms access ms access is not a database okay it will be like a uh, ms access is not a database like it is like an excel sheet you can store the data in that ms access okay you are saying microsoft query language right yeah yeah ms access is there sorry microsoft query language yeah ms access is a uh, another relational database okay mm. see uh, difference between sql and mysql there is no difference between these two okay sql is uh, given by oracle uh, primarily it was uh, written in oracle okay and mysql is the latest little latest one 1994 they started off and uh, the language will change the query language may differ okay between sql and mysql mostly functionalities used in mysql and sql will be the same both are structured databases only that is a relational databases only there are not much differences maybe the uh, engines which are used engine in the sense we don't get, get into that detail but internally maybe the working is a different but both, both are more or less similar only see sql is oracle database you can say and uh, mysql is also oracle one but it is the latest one nowadays it is most widely used in the market in companies also the market okay both are similar similar query language may change some are supported in uh, mostly more or less same only yeah maria db yes maria db is also a relational database but that is not used mostly i think maria db that is actually comes uh, along with uh, while you install mysql itself it will come okay these are all some of the example for relational database there are many available okay relational databases okay and uh, some example i can say it for stuck uh, no sql i told no no sql means it will not store the data in the rows and column format okay it will uh, some example you can think of uh, like um, binary data okay or uh, ordered not ordered uh, what do you mean that Ah, no sql it will not have any structure okay see if you see some uh, no 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 see there is a, something like us um, there is mongodb is a no sql database they say okay they store the data in the format of json it means like uh, java this is json is uh, java uh, i forgot it's a javascript yeah, javascript object notation okay javascript object notation okay so it means like it will start and it will have some data inside it like uh, open braces close braces and it will have a values inside it so this kind of a data will be stored in the database so it will not follow any row structure any structure it will not follow and uh, some other example you can say data in documents yeah this um, mongodb will store the data in the format of documents okay and there is also another uh, like hbase you will see it in hadoop okay that will store data as a column format okay I'll, th those things we'll get in detail when we go there <coughs> so this kind of like you cannot relate them or you cannot like um, structure them like uh, rows and columns particular data i mean fixed structure you cannot give for them so those we call it as a no sql database i mean those those kind of data where we will store will st we they have found a different kind of uh, storage system which is like uh, mongodb or hbase or cassandra okay to store that kind of information into that and uh, key value pairs yeah key value pairs is like um, there is also there are also databases okay like um, map databases where we can store key value pairs and we can also call this as a no structured data okay all those things some examples of other no sql databases okay okay we will further move on we were seeing rdbms okay this we have seen 
okay so this is some definition about rdbms like a relational database management system a software which is used to store manage query and retrieve huge volume of data from the relational database relational database as i told the tables shall be related or may can, can uh, be present independently also no problem but it can you can relate both the tables so if one other example i can give like say you have a customer information if you're going to a, a store we say that customer information and the orders he has given okay so here i say it's a table format i store like um, customer one his name and order he made okay and what order orders if i example five order five he made and i have the order table it has all five order number five okay number five is made okay like uh, uh, one two three four five so he has made the fifth order so i am trying to relate i'm not in a single table itself i'm not storing customer information and order information okay order information can have like uh, uh, the product name okay product name product id and the price of the product and uh, whether it is a edible product or something like that those information i can store into a separate table okay so how it is i can relate between these two table this is internally in plain english what it means the customer information can uh, uh, I mean you can relate to the customer information on which order he has purchased a particular customer which order he has purchased and about the information about the order is present in the order table so this way you can relate the tables this can be done using the keys okay later on we will see two types of keys which is nothing but the primary key and uh, foreign keys okay that i will tell you little further more okay like uh, to understand about what is relation is between the tables you can create a relation okay and uh, you can have separate tables you don't have to merge everything into a single uh, compound information you can have it as a separate tables so it is easy to maintain also okay so it is like an interface you can think between users applications and the database this is called a relational database because all data is stored di into different tables and relations are established using the primary keys or other keys also okay uh, also known as the foreign key so the you can you can represent a key in a one table and you can refer using the t, that key in the another table that's what that primary key and foreign key concepts okay so we will see in detail about primary key and foreign key but right now you understand that relation is like you can create a relation between the tables that's why they are our relational databases okay uh, furthermore okay some of the terminologies when we talk about any databases database is one of the terminology it is a collection of table and related data okay and it uh, it is not uh, mandatory that related data but normally how do we segregate everything see when you take a when you take your la desktop or in your uh, laptop you segregate uh, data is based on folders right all your learning things you will put it in a one folder all your assignments you will put it in another folder likewise so segregation of data that is useful right then why do we have a database likewise table is a matrix with the data a table in the a database looks like a simple spreadsheet it looks like a spreadsheet okay so matrix uh, is like uh, we can give the rows and columns that's what they say it's a matrix and uh, it is looking like a simple spreadsheet in spreadsheet so similar thing is uh, before databases and all have come into picture they would have Thing, thought about storing data in a spreadsheet right but a large amount of information you cannot store in a spreadsheet and traversing it retrieving the data you cannot write queries in a spreadsheet right that and all is very difficult so using database will be very good and column is one column uh, the column name which we are giving here right each column column one column two this we can call it as an attribute or a data element this 
that's what here they are say interchangeably we use the words contains a data of one or of one and the same kind for example the column postcode example they are giving like if you have a column employee name employee id all this called as an attribute in java also we call them as attributes right attributes or fields here also we can change the say in the same name a row a row is called the tuple okay this row the complete row is can also be called as a tuple or an entry or a record okay similar in the spreadsheet also we can say like that is a group of related data for example the data of one subscription that is the employee data the employee data like his name id phone number and all stuffs okay then redundancy storing data twice see redundancy is like you can store the data multiple number of times that's what they are saying it is it will allow you to store data okay likewise no no employee if there is only one day one employee employee one then you can store only one information it means multiple tables you can have and you can store different multiple same data repeatedly also means look no not the same information it will say information is present what do they mean i think this doesn't make any sense you can uh, replicate the data i think like uh, different error Mm, yeah if you give it uh, yeah that is also possible you can have a same data multiple times it is possible but that doesn't make any sense here but i don't know why this is given redundancy storing data twice it will allow you to store your data twice unless until you restrict saying store unique data it will allow you to store your data twice we will we can see it while doing examples okay and then about some other terminologies like foreign key primary key compound key index and referential integrity so primary key is uh, like unique so um, uh, how do i say is so if you take our employee database you can have that each employee will have a unique email id right his email id and the phone number is always going to be unique okay or you can also give a unique id for him like uh, when a, whenever an employee joins a company he they will give a unique id for them likewise like a customer who is making a purchase you can uh, normally nowadays they ask you to give your information right to store it if any points are there they will add it to your account likewise so that customer information that customer id can be ca called as a primary key see primary key plays a a role uh, furthermore but uh, now you can understand like a key which uniquely identifies any row okay so if you say that row column okay if i gave the employee id as a primary key if i mention this as a primary key so this key will uniquely identify this row the employee row okay employee one employee if id is 100 using this 100 you can uniquely identify this employee information Okay. with a key you can find one find one row that's what they are saying and the foreign key is used for linking between the two tables okay and a primary key which is a, a key which is primary to a one table that is employee table can be used in the another table okay like a department table okay like employee id only you can use it and you can say this as a foreign key in the department table okay so in this way using the foreign key you can link the primary the link the employee table and also the department table okay it is used to create a relationship between the one table to another table okay uh, it means see, see i say like the primary key 100 is uniquely identify the uh, employee one okay and to which a department he belongs using the foreign key you can find it maybe if this is a department of uh, uh, say sales or a department of hr so he we can say that this employee belongs to the sales department likewise okay it, it is it is to link between the two tables and furthermore there is a compound key this is the composite it's a key that consists of multiple columns because one column is not uh, suffi sufficiently unique you see at what they say is here we are talking about a single key right between two tables you can also have a 
multiple keys to uniquely to relate between the two tables so that's what they are saying it i will explain in detail about uh, when we are doing this okay now you just uh, think that there can be keys keys can be used to relate to tables while it comes to relationship you can use a foreign key and a compound key compound key can be here it is only employee id it can be like employee id and plus email address also can be considered as a unique key okay likewise you can use that and indexing there is another concept or terminology in database terms which is an index resembles an index of the book used to find the rows so whenever you write any language query language okay sql any query statement it means you are uniquely try to identify some data from the table right okay uh, so there is uh, an indexing concept okay indexing when i say you think that uh, in your book okay there will be index part in the end right just a moment okay i'll continue uh, okay this uh, indexing i was talking about this is one terminology in which um, uh, in, in your book why do we use the index normally if you wanted to quickly find any of the topics which we don't know where it is present or some words where it is present in your book what we will do we will go to the end uh, end of the book we'll see in the index there the page number will be there right we'll go and search inside the page number during examination times we used to do like some topics if you wanted to revise it we go to the index page we'll see where all it is present and we'll try uh, revising it or reading it or understanding the concept likewise so it is like a quick access in in your database you can have an index okay we can we can create indexes so that the accessing of a particular information in your table will be faster this i will also discuss more so since today is an introductory section so don't worry about it you will you will understand each and every concept later on clearly okay we will do exercise also in that and referential integrity make sure that a foreign key value always points to the existing key what they say is uh, when you are trying to delete any information that time that there is uh, make sure so that a foreign key value always points to the primary key uh, that's what okay this also i will explain it a little later on okay referential integrity it means uh, the information availability should be present between the even see what does it mean is if two tables are related okay uh, and i say i am relating it with a key value so deleting an information which is referred in another table should be taken care that's what they are saying that referential integrity did you understand like say two tables like employee table and department table all related by a key here i am saying the primary key and the foreign key right so if i delete some information in one of the table the key should not uh, affect okay it because it is referring to other information in a different table so that should not get affected that's what referential integrity means it makes sure that a foreign key values always points to the existing row so what does it mean in that sense is after explaining this i will talk about referential integrity again okay so first we will understand the concept about primary key and foreign key okay so primary key uh, is actually as i told it uniquely identifies a row so whenever you create any table in your database what do i told like we are going to store information into the table how do we store we create tables right we create a table and we will say that uh, rows will be of this type what are the columns it is going to have it is like what are the attributes it is going to have so here there is a person table the person table it is going to have the column names like person id last name first name and age okay so here the person id i say it as a primary key primary key is the key which uniquely identifies the row it means when i try to search write any query or retrieve the data of uh, person id 1 it gives all the information it refers to all the information like person id 
last name first name age of the person table likewise if i try to retrieve information of person id 2 it refers all information like last name first name and age of person id 2 so that is what a primary key is what are the condition to have a primary key the primary key will be non null okay and it will be unique value non null means you cannot have a person id no value and you can have like um, peter john 40 this is not possible person id null value for a primary key null value it will not allow and it will not it will always take a unique value it means it can have only four or five or anything else it cannot have it cannot give a duplicate value like three again okay that's what it is so that is the condition a primary key follows it will always be non-null and a unique value okay and uh, this each row is called as a row or a tuple okay so now we say the foreign key is the one which links between the two tables where in this example they have given order table as the another table okay as we know the person has made an order say for example he has made an order uh, with the order number 77895 say and the person has also made an order 44678 in this example how it shows is the person table no the person 3 peter peterson he has made two orders okay so, uh, of order number 77895 and of order number 44678 eight okay so and i also have in the order information order table the person id as three three okay so in this way i can relate i can actually retrieve the data from two tables actually the person table also and also from the order table okay and uh, we can say the person uh, seven son has made only one order okay B based on the id person id we can say that uh, the person seven son has made only one order and pa person Hansen okay has made only one order likewise so how am I relating it internally plain English this person has made an order uh, 77895 and 4469678 uh, how they are related using the primary key a primary key of one table is acting as a foreign key of the another table which is helping us to relate between the two tables so this is how this is a relational database we can say it okay is this clear is this concept clear that vice versa is also possible like a order table you can make the order id as a primary key okay in the order table and this you can say like this person has made an order say one more table or column I give order ID I can give and I can say this person person one has made an order one comma two likewise or he has made an order two or he has made an order three in that way this becomes the foreign key in person table vice versa is also possible okay one thing we saw right referential integrity what does it mean is say so for example i'm trying yeah yes user will decide which can be our primary key and foreign key but when you say any key as a primary key then it will it should have a value and it should be a unique value okay um, normally primary key only you will decide when you use that in another table another table then it becomes a foreign key okay while retrieving it you can see the difference okay i will show you with a query we will see how it you can retrieve it okay we'll, uh, i was talking about referential integrity right it means say for example i try to delete the uh, row one okay row one tuple one this one i try to delete it uh, but uh, in your order table row one is referred somewhere here okay so what it will do if i try to delete this row one in person table it will not allow me saying it is dependent with a foreign key okay that's what this referential integrity is what it's saying uh, referential integrity is a concept okay it is applied in your rdbms 
the concept says that it will make sure you should make sure that whenever you are trying to remove any anything related any key related then the foreign key always uh, shouldn't point to the existing row here it says like the foreign key value always points to the existing row okay so it, it the uh, primary key value should always be present in one other table that's what the this is like we are ensuring that integrity is present between the two tables okay so e even in your case you know if you try to delete it also my sql will not allow you to delete the primary key which is referred in the different table okay till now it is clear can you tell me then i will move on I think today we'll go in uh, lecture only. Are you all able to follow it? Okay, so about the query, structured query language, this, uh, no, about ACID, okay. See, any relational databases follows the ACID properties. Okay, anyone wants to say what is ACID property? acid when you say it, it's a relational database or a data relational database it suffice acid later on we will see why why, why that uh, no sql databases have come into picture okay because no sql will not uh, uh, satisfied acid properties yeah atomicity consistency isolation and durability so anyone wants to see what is what each means Atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Uh, now I will explain it but uh, I'm not sure whether you will be able to relate it but you just understand by conceptual wise later after moving with some examples when you when I tell this again then you can easily relate it okay atomicity is uh, it's like a complete transaction they will say what is what does it mean is say if any transactions you make see any transactions means it is not a bank transaction okay it is like uh, you are telling or creating any table creating any table uh, uh, first you create a table okay and you add uh, data into the table like uh, row one all columns into the table okay this action will be complete okay this uh, okay say for example i say like uh, insert value into the table Okay, insert value I write a query and the complete action will be done in one flow otherwise in real time what you can see is and the banking transaction or something if you say one transaction happens okay from one if you're going to transfer the fund from one account to another account the complete transaction completes right from taking the amount like 10,000 from account to one okay and 10,000 transferring to 10,000 account to till the complete transaction is finished this we they say it as atomicity it means the whole thing will be completed if I inserted any data into a database the complete information will be stored into your database like insertion of employee name employee ID everything will be complete okay that they will call it as a atomicity all the elements that make up a complete database a transaction say I say create a table okay it can be a transaction create a table it means like a table with a table name name also I will give it means the a table is created okay it will not uh, hang in the middle like half ta table created I have not told like how to create a table I also tell like how to create a table also all things will be done in one complete uh, flow that the the one complete flow or one complete operation they call it as a transaction in uh, database also okay like inserting the values retrieving the values everything they will say it as a transaction in database also so in real time you can think like one account to another account you transferring the data then that is a one transaction okay then consistency means um, okay so uh, like in ba bank transaction the complete amount 
like uh, transferring from account one to account two is is finished like uh, like 10000 amount i wanted to transfer 10000 amount is transferred that is what the consistency is like it defines the rules for maintaining data points in current state after transaction uh, whatever the uh, information we give uh, if you wanted to create uh, the table completely it will completely create it that's what that consistency is it will not be like uh, half the transaction happened or half the transaction didn't happen likewise it will not uh, do okay okay i will explain about isolation is keeps the effect of okay isolation is like each statement will be executed separately like i create a table i select uh, information from a table i insert values into the table each statement each sql query statement will be done separately okay one by one it will not be like messing up together like create also will start insert also will start it will not happen even when you are passing the queries when you are writing the sql queries you no know, you will write it likewise only one query at a time one query will be executed first and the next one and the next one that's what that isolation is okay keeps the effect of transactions invisible to others until it is committed to avoid confusion actually committed means uh, even the other others if you can say like uh, invisible okay one transaction is like creation of a table will not affect the insertion of the table likewise it is called okay the intermediate state um, Uh, in real time if you can say like uh, the transferring of a funds from one account to another by a person cannot be seen by another person so i'm says just trying to give a real time example okay don't worry we will uh, see uh, after later session more detail about that and durability is once it is uh, updated in the database like when you created a table the table will be permanently present there okay it will not be like a removed in the middle or it will not be there is something like commit okay where it means once it is committed committed means once it is you can think like once a statement is submitted is a successful the table will always be present it will not be like a temporary storage so this is what acid property is acid you can think like atomic okay each single transactions will be complete in the database consistency is uh, the state like uh, one of one transaction if you are giving that transaction will be complete that you can make it sure isolation is the transaction between uh, transaction here i say like uh, creation of the tables or insertion will not be missed will not be uh, what you can say overlapping okay each win will go for one by one likewise and durability is it will be present all the time permanent permanently whatever the queries you give or whatever the uh, data you put it in your uh, uh, database it will be present permanently is this okay I, we will see this this topic later on okay so okay uh, when we start writing our code and all then it, not code our SQL, sql commands then it will be easy to understand okay see at uh, i mean uh, this this property is you no know, if it goes to other if we talk about other languages like uh, not languages like no sql and all uh, we cannot say that uh, it is atomic like one see, one operation is completed then the other operation will start that you cannot ensure in no sql data other databases other non relational databases this are relational databases other non relation databases we cannot say that data is stored okay we cannot say that uh, uh, one transaction is not overlapping with the another that it will not suffice all this conditions it will not present in other, other databases whereas relational database if you take should satisfy all these things i will tell about this after doing some exercises then it will be more clear okay now with theory may not be clear fine any other doubts okay then about structured query language it is a standard database language as i told to create maintain and retrieve the relational database datas a programming language for the relational databases okay it's a structured query language and uh, what is structured means in the query language 
uh, that's what it is here it is mm, i'm seeing how many are there okay that's all so what is uh, structure in the query language means in that structured query language it is mean actually they divide the way of uh, storing the data so if you think of excel sheets right here normally we have columns right i'll take employee id name and age likewise and uh, uh, physically we store the data so there are two ways you can uh, relate this is the logical structure logical structure means how your data table looks like and this data stored like 100 name as a peter age as a 40 and uh, 101 the physical data stored no those are called the physical storage structure okay this that is why they say it as a uh, structure where you can represent the data uh, we can give a logical structure like a uh, what kind what can be the how to refer the data and also the physical storage of data that's why they call it as a structured query language structure itself they are distinguishing between logical and physical structure in the logical way we say that the data tables the views and the indexes okay indexes i told no to particularly for faster access say i wanted to get the information of age 40 then you can have an index of a 40 age and you can retrieve the data so faster index the the views which we see the way to create your table and all you can say it as a logical structure an actual stored data how the data shall be accessed or stored those are the physical structures so in this way we call this as the query language as structured okay and the application to specify the content it needs okay and database administrators can manage both the physical data storage without affecting the access to the data in the, what does it mean is administrators in the when it comes database see data when i talk about database there can be database users yeah the person we are using it developers who try to develop the database itself or the administrators who maintains it when we talk, this is we are talking in smaller scales right we are understanding it but when it comes to large scale in a company so administrators will be there it will not be like a uh, small information one example i can uh, say about a huge set of information is like you can think of a subscriber information see if you think order phone how many subscribers will be there for an order phone okay order phone subscribers sim card for an airtel how many subscribers will be there so the subscriber informations are not so huge okay so to maintain those information and the doing uh, loading that into your database and all the database administrators will come into picture obviously when you're storing data space comes into picture right so all these things will be maintained by the database administrators so they will know how to have a physical storage like how your database looks like without touching the data information like the data itself they can do an administration of how your data can be stored or how much space each uh, column should take or uh, each table should take likewise okay renaming a database will not affect the tables now what what here i'm trying to say is without touching the data itself he can only change the structure of the data like a physical uh, logical data structure information only he can change it that's what it means so is this clear slide structure we can think of like a logical format or a uh, physical format logical format means how your data is going to be stored in your database and physical format is actual data actual means like name value everything and the administrators will have a control to change the structure of your data okay rather than touching your data itself okay this may be extra information but just it is also there in the slide is this fine shall i move on so this is about the logical and the physical storage data structures uh, logically means like tables the views views we will see it later on okay we can create a separate views from your tables and uh, so that uh, 
it will not be like a physical one stored one but um, i will say it later on now if i say it will be confusing and indexes you can have index uh, for a particular column or anything and we can use for faster accesses um, and physically yeah ma'am again can you say previous previous this one structured query yes ma'am cross structured query i okay. did not i did not understand ma'am okay i'll okay i'll read this see uh, when in the structured uh, query language how how we are saying the database is a structured we keep the you know, we tell you no know, like relation database is a structured query language or a, a we pass the query in a structured format because it is stored in rows and columns and is structured so internally how they say is it can, the data is stored the table or the databases can be created in a uh, logical or a physical storage structures they represent in the logical or the physical storage logical means see if it take a rows and columns no rows for the employee table i say like employee id name age and all this stuffs so the structure i am giving it to the table okay this is the employee table and uh, i say this one as a row one this we know it so the structure i am giving it to the table and uh, how much space name how much character it should take like a uh, can say 50 age will be of type here also data type will come into picture okay age as age is of type integer and the employee id is of type integer so this is the logical structure they say the, like how your uh, table is looking like or how the database is having the tables like uh, it can have multiple tables again like department on all stuff all things the physical storage is the actual data is present like 100 sorry 100 like i say that peter 40 the actual data which is present is a physical storage structure structures that's how you can say that your database or uh, the language which you are saying is a structured query language anyone can accessing this uh, table can modify the structure of the table right no need to change the value of the table what do i mean he can say a just uh or he can say name as he can modify the name as employee name he can also modify the field value it can hold as 60 60 characters it can can hold so uh so okay actually that is not necessary like changing and all but what does it that structure means it is like you can divide the structure in the form of a logical or a physical about any table or about any database database is a collection of tables only you know so about the table and you can say like logical structure is how the table should look like and the physical storage structure is how the data is actually stored okay so that's what i explained here so logical is this an application can specify the content, the operations for any logical structure will be like uh, anybody can provide a query okay uh, give some data of uh, age okay all the ages of the employee and uh, uh, his employee ids of all the employee likewise and the physical physical storage means actual data no that you can access and do some manipulation also on that so the idea of this top uh, this slide is to show you like structure is the table or the database is structured in a logical and a physical format why you are saying it as a structure because it can have the structure in this way am i making it clear making sense venkana babu structure when they say what is a structure when somebody asks you keep saying structure query language structure means we are giving a structure to the table like we are also representing it in the uh, logical format and also we can say the physical stored data together we can we call it as a structured query language like this you can think of okay this are a little more understanding i have uh, given i think i have read somewhere this one it means somebody who is accessing the table uh, may not change the value of the table you can only change the structure of the table that is also possible structure means logical structure of the table that's why i have given it here okay
so this is about it so communication between the rdbs and the mysql relational databases uh, and mysql is so this is where comes the now we will understand about the client server okay server is the place where your data is stored data stored and the client okay is the place where you will write queries that is the sql queries sql queries to access the data from the server okay so in uh, uh, enterprises in or in your companies you can see this separately because their stored uh, storage of data will be so huge okay they will so server what is meant by server this can be a mission okay some server mission or like some hard disk we have hard disk no so that have they have a server mission that will it, with a huge space okay whereas a client can be a small application like just directly querying the data from the databases databases means the server it is stored in the form of databases only okay there can be multiple databases in the server too okay so multiple databases in the server too okay and it can have multiple tables okay so uh, in uh, when we are installing it okay my sql in our ubuntu machine both server and client will be in the same machine because uh, we are not segregating it right we are like uh, only uh, a small scale user for our practice so when you install it we will have a client means wherever you write the query right you will open a my sql prompt okay wherever you write your query that is the uh, sql query this will act as a server and uh, sorry client sorry this will act as a client and server means our hard disk only where it is actually data stored okay uh, that it will query from the hard disk and it will give us as the result but hard disk how it is it is not a direct hard disk uh, accessing but it is through the server we see okay is this clear client and the server architecture they divide it in client and server format because maintainability will be easy normally if it is a client server architecture okay we can segregate the operations like uh, what a client can do what a server can do in server spaces here in mysql we store data okay we can also do some administrative activities administrative activities that's what i told like he can access or the way the data has to be stored he can the administrator can give the uh, information whereas client will uh, give the queries or the client activities can do uh, like passing queries uh, to the database to the server to retrieve some information that's what here they have written select region name from the region so data is to the region is the table name okay this table is stored in the server it gives the queries to the server and server gives the information the region name like europe america asia middle east and africa likewise all the information okay guys client server is it clear okay for others okay then i will move on so why we are going to use mysql it is very well suited for a small for our practices and also in large application so many companies use it okay many companies use it like the companies which we have given down you can think right like facebook and all how much data they store then uh, uh, so that much is, uh, extensible this uh, mysql is so it is used in many, many places in the market it can also be used in the web application e-commerce e-commerce we know like uh, shopping and all web application means uh, some information when you are trying to retrieve from the database during your traversal of uh, uh, pages that also you can use the mysql it's just a data storage unit right database means it's a storage unit okay on demand flexibility you can access any time uh, it is like uh, it will not be like a uh, go for a maintenance stage and all so it is flexible 
this uh, you can access anytime fast reliable and easy to use a uh, reliable reliability it means that uh, once the data is stored it is always permanent okay any relational databases is like that only okay it is highly available uh, uh, when you retrieve the data it will give the data to us so highly available huge volume of data you can store it and it also has a security features these things we still will not see okay so how the security is on all applied one security you can think like when you are installing mysql okay you will give the password that is one of the securities but uh, security features that will control that will be taken care by the administrators like uh, storing of data the server nobody should access right those things okay furthermore see storage engines uh, um, i'll talk a little later on we will not talk now storage engines is like the way how you are going to store your data okay so they have a different storage engines uh, for many databases okay uh, these are the types of storage engines okay if it is of uh, if the engine engine means uh, you can think right like in a car we have an engine and the engine says how the car works likewise they also have a storage engine if it is of a type each type it will do uh, different ways okay i know db i n n o d b uh, this is the uh, default one after 5.5 this is the default storage engine so what it says is how the transaction will happen it is acid compliant okay tables will be acid compliant and uh, foreign key will support the referential integrity it means whichever the foreign key is referring to another table that table information has to be present likewise it will support commit rollback and uh, crash recovery rollback means uh, you are uh, trying to write uh, store a data and but you don't want to store a data you want to undo it likewise that is a rollback okay you want to store the data commit means it will go and permanently store in your uh, space memory space and crash recovery and all all this should be supported in this engine will support it means when you uh, install your mysql okay defaultly it will be uh, set with this engine okay so whatever the queries which you are writing all will be compliant with this description whatever it is given here okay you can change the engine based on your requirement okay based on your user requirement you can change the engine say if you want uh, some engine where you don't want to do non create non transactional uh, tables or high speed storage uh, if you want a locking systems and a locking means uh, two people cannot access the same table or a row okay locking or if you want to change into a different storage unit like memory where uh, tables are created in the heap if you want to change it or if you wanted to store data in a csv format then you can change the engine from InnoDB to csv likewise okay and uh, different descriptions are given for each of the storage engines i hope you understand what a storage engine is right it means the engine which uh, not an engine like um, the type how your data is going to be stored those things are defined by the engines i mean this supports okay if it is in the form of in no i know db then all these descriptions will be present likewise it is okay defaultly it is in no db that's what about this storage engine you can see the storage engine okay okay it is a software module okay so i told like uh, mysql is written in c c++ i told right internally because uh, it is written in c c++ so it's a module okay in that uh, uh, implementation where it says how you have to uh, create read and update your databases okay there are two types of uh, engines in mysql one is transactional and non transactional transactional is row level locking they say row level you understand no row level means this one this is a row level row level locking means uh when one one person is uh, accessing this information or one application or if you are writing a query to uh, get the row one okay uh, then another another query or another user cannot write a query to access a row one that's what row level locking is table level locking is whole table will be locked 
that is a non transactional engine okay there the uh, two types of engines we have seen uh, this ino db i n n o db is transactional engine where it will allow for the row level locking so in that way it suffices the acid compliant also acid i told right atomicity it is consistent like one is accessing other cannot access the row okay see you can create users in my sequel okay uh, we will see in detail later on at that time i will again uh, explain about this one okay users in my sequel in the sense see um, a server no server information can be accessed by many clients okay this is client 1 client 2 this one person it means he can write a query he can also write query and access the particular server server in the sense internally some table you are going to access it okay when you are trying to lock the table on row wise that is two client cannot access two client cannot write query to access the particular row then we say it is a transactional uh, i mean transactional type transactional type uh, otherwise it is uh, table itself is locked table itself cannot be accessed then it is non transactional the thing is the engine is developed in such a way that my sequel engine that if it is of this type you know db whatever i told will suffice otherwise it is it will be uh, taking any other you know i know uh, engine itself okay uh, engine is like the working of the database okay for my sequel 5.5 or later the default uh, storage engine is you know db whereas before it was my isam okay that is also present but uh, we don't use it now it is you know db it means if you install my sequel or my sequel latest version will be 8 if you install 8.0 then it will comes with the you know db engine itself okay so by showing engine you can see all the engine supported okay there are these many engines available storage engines how the data is stored and how you can access it it is mentioned by this engines by this software module okay okay these are the examples you can read through it mm, the storage in specified at time of creation okay you can also create uh, say the storage inside an in engine they are saying it okay we'll see this later on okay we'll see the versions and stuffs okay okay the front end front end means uh, now we are going to um, write all the queries the structured query language sql queries my sql queries in your terminal itself in your linux machine itself okay linux terminal in the my sql prompt okay we'll go to that prompt and we will write it otherwise you can have the uh, interfaces like um, eclipse you we have installed right for writing java codes likewise to write the queries you can have my sql workbench or sql pro db visualizers and navigate db admission admin tool any of this like an ide you can think of okay uh, like a eclipse this you can use it to write your queries normally they use widely used is mysql workbench this also we will install and see but uh, when i am writing queries i mostly write it from mysql prompt that is terminal okay because this you can learn it later on you can work you mostly will work with that only okay then versions my sequel comes in this versions like a community version and the enterprise server this is open source anyone can use it enterprises so when it is like when enterprise is doing a purchase they will take a license to install that they will have an advanced features okay when it uh, when to apply in your enterprise enterprise is huge right for a companies likewise latest is this one i think this has changed i don't know 8.0 is the one i know but uh, this minor version i don't know you can check it you can download it uh, my sequel workbench versions from the archives okay this is the download place and uh, this one is supported okay in ubuntu we will take uh, my sequel version 8.0.20 we have installed ubuntu 20.04 right for this version we will install 8.0.20 if you have installed ubuntu 18.04 or 
I don't know which one will work. Actually, this is we have tested. Okay, for 20.0.04, 8.0.20, we have tested it. Okay, this version works well. Otherwise, we will we can test with later version, but I'm not sure. Okay, this one we will download. Then after that, it is installation. So we will do installation today itself. If you we will do it, then we'll take a break and we will do the installation. Okay, because I want a break. We'll take a break and do it. No. Please don't go. Okay, we will take a 10 minutes break. Uh, don't go anywhere. Please ask your friends also to join the classes. I am not sure why they are not joining. Okay. We will take a 10 minutes break and we will we'll do an installation only and then it will be fine. Okay, I started the recording. I'm going to show the installation. Maria, you are there. Uh, Sara Venkana Babu. Okay, open your VTE also along with me do the installation. Maria, open your VT lab. Okay, do the installation along with me so that it will be easy. Even I will show the installation. So now we will do the installation of uh, MySQL. Okay, it will install both the clients and the client and server together in your machine. Okay, I have opened my VT lab. In that, I will open the terminal. Okay, so in this, first we will do an update of the softwares, okay, uh, of Linux softwares. Maybe it will have a new package of MySQL. We'll directly install it from the terminal itself, okay. We don't have to download it. We can install it from the terminal itself. Okay, installing MySQL in Ubuntu. So first I will do a update. 
sudo apt update this will update the software repositories okay the, there will be a file in your uh, linux machine which will have a link to link means it will actually connect with the internet okay uh, link to where they are repositories are present like mysql will normally how do we download we go to your browser and uh, type eclipse on all right eclipse likewise it will have the repository information that it will directly connect and it will download it for us so i will do update it is asking for the password i'll give the password so it is updating so update some 49 packages upgraded okay now we will install mysql server okay server means it will install both client and server but this is the command apt sudo apt get install mysql server okay so enter it do you want to continue yes okay okay you want me to wait then tell me i will wait after update you give this command sudo apt get mm, here i will write sudo apt get install my sql server hyphen server okay okay uh, next step is uh, yeah after doing this yes why you give <coughs> it is asking whether to continue why enter okay it is done it's done no prakash done right then afterwards it is not working oh it's working okay then we will do a secure in installation secure installation 
to give whether the password or some accessibility information that we will give it here okay so sudo <coughs> mysql hyphen secure installation okay sudo you know that it uh, to, to give in order to give the root permission you will give sudo then mysql hi underscore underscore it is hi not hyphen underscore so this will have some options that we will set it okay for the server Okay, enter it it will ask for options okay um, it is asking press s yes, valid validate password component likewise so then we can give it as a yes here okay so which level of a password here we can set the passwords three level of password accessibility is there low medium strong which level you wanted to give okay <coughs> anything you can give zero for low one for medium and two for strong so i will give low only because i am not going to set a big password so low okay enter it is asking for the new password for in order to access your mysql you will have to give this password okay that i will give i have given some password it will not come here okay you can give your own password okay again retyping the password do you wish to continue with the password provided yes i will give here okay then it is asking me uh before considering you have to instead of asking yes i will give new password is one two three Yes, it is not accepting. Set as no significance for root as authentication method used does not store. <coughs> then also it is asking for password. <coughs> it is sudo only but why it is not accepting Okay, I will quit this and I will try without a password. Okay, so do <laughs> secure installation. <laughs> it's not quitting. Connecting to MySQL with a blank password, the valid password please set a password for root here it is not quitting actually i have opened a different terminal 
one minute i'll just check it why it is not taking it is throwing error I think I have to do some work around for this. It was installing before. Okay, what I will do is Okay I'll open a new terminal. I think it is not working maybe because of latest MySQL version one minute So what I will do I'll just check this and I will let you know okay because it is not working then we'll check it actually some problem is there it's been long i did the installation after this command it is not accepting me the password <coughs> after this command no uh, next command it is not working because it will do a secure installation Uh-huh. 
<laughs> okay, I will do one more thing. If it works, I'll tell. Just give me a minute. It's not working. Okay, guys, I will see it tomorrow. Okay, tell you tomorrow because it is not working now. Normally, it will take, I think, some root permission. It is not allowing to work. My SQL secure installation. It is not record also, but still we will check it. I'll show it tomorrow, okay? My SQL itself is running. So, it is some root permission problem. Okay, uh, it is working. Can I show it now or I will continue tomorrow? It is working because I have given the password wrong. Okay. There is a one command you have to use it to add the users. Anyway, we will continue tomorrow. I, will, I don't want to confuse now. We will continue tomorrow. Okay. So two steps you can finish till now, like um, sudo apt update, apt get install server you can do, installation of the server will done. This is an extra step, okay, this process, this is a process which will help you to set how your uh, server should be, okay, for that we will set it and then uh, we can say see the status and we can log in and start working on it. From tomorrow, uh, I will, tomorrow I will show this, okay. Okay, thank you all. We'll meet tomorrow. You can leave now.